on the News Channel 5 Network. This is Open Line. Well, good evening and welcome into Open Line. I'm Chuck Long. Glad to be along with you for the next hour. This is going to be a great night. It's one of our favorite nights and one of our favorite guests is going to be with us for the entire hour. Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm right here in Middle Tennessee. And I tell you what, if you have those questions, those legal questions, this is the time to ask. And those questions, of course, are answered by none other than Kevin Kennedy Hi, from Chuck. the Kennedy Law Firm. We're Always glad great to, to have you. you. This is our Thanksgiving hour. So that we, is it. We, you have plans for Thanksgiving? Well, all the family, all the the turkey, you know, and it's, uh, you know, when you look back, those are the most important times of your life. So you'll learn something tonight. Share with your family that you saw and ask the attorney. You can't teach enough. You can't preach enough. Protect your family the best you can. Absolutely. And, you know, we look at Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is a nice time for the family to get, get together. But one of the things that we found, especially over this past year, is sometimes there's just conflicts in family. Yes. And, I mean, and we get from callers all the time, you know, something happened here with an estate planning with will yes. planning. You know, there's so many things you've got to really consider. Yeah, and family is a delicate subject anyway, and especially if you have brothers and sisters who have been distant or aunts and uncles, the more distant people become, the more opportunity for disagreement. And so the best way to keep down a misunderstanding is to have a good understanding. Yep. And so uh, I, I want to share that because I think it's great news. A little preparation will go a long ways. No, I've never known a family, a father or mother that passed away and wanted their children to be in an argument or dispute. They take great pains to avoid that. And uh, that's what you should do tonight. So if you don't have the will, you don't have the power of attorney, uh, let's do it. Power of attorney for health care, durable power of attorney. And what does that really Really mean? That means if Chuck had a car wreck tonight, he couldn't function, and his mother had his durable power of attorney, then she could go ahead and pay his house payment, pay his electric bills. Everybody should have someone you can trust. And you know, that's one of the things that you can do that uh, we always enjoy about this. When we say this is the Ask an Expert Hour, this is Ask the Attorney, this specific episode that you're watching this evening. This is your chance to give us a call. The number's on your screen, 737-7587. Those questions not only help you, but they Tell also it, help Chuck. a lot of the other viewers. That's Absolutely. what we always find. And what I think is the more we discuss it, then something else pops in your mind. One of the secrets on the bar exam that I was really good in helping my classmates, we analyze it and an issue comes out. I didn't just answer it, I identified the issues and then revisited. And it's been it's helped me my whole legal career. I try to teach young lawyers, identify the issues, and a really skilled lawyer can identify many of them. Kevin, I've told you this many times, it's uh, I always enjoy this hour, in particular when you're here. Um, I get an education, I really do. Uh, so and, and you guys, you've been in business yes, over 35 years. Yes. That says a lot. People come to you from all walks of life. That's right. With all walks of life, problems, questions, Absolutely. situations. I was just jotting down some of the things. Everything from criminal law, personal injury, if you were injured in a car wreck, on the job, family law, yep. bankruptcy, estates, wills, nursing, home care, you lost your job. So many different topics. You guys handle all of those. We've been blessed. You just triggered my mind to an issue I want to share with our broadcast tonight. If you're injured in a car wreck, one of the new techniques of the insurance companies, when they get your medical records, they're going to go to your lawyer and say, this is why your case is not worth The first thing they are saying, there was a lapse in treatment. Okay, what does that mean? Chuck and I had a car wreck tonight. He's really hurt. But he's got five TV shows that must be done. No way around them. Live shows, we've got to do them. So he, And then he goes to the doctor on Friday. The insurance company's going to come back and say, first off, Chuck was not hurt. They don't even know. But they're going to assume from the records, he waited a week to be treated, they will use it against you. And again, we start our treatment, the doctor says you need to come and see me next week and you miss that. They're going to say, lapse of treatment. So you're in control of your case. Your lawyer can help and direct you. The healthcare professionals can try to give you the treatment. But remember, the insurance company is crossing every T, dotting every I against you. They've got very skilled lawyers. They always have. They always will. Well, and Kevin, too, another thing that I've learned, you know, from uh, doing the show with you is be careful when you are in a situation, in a car accident, yes. something like that, what you say. Absolutely. Because a lot of times you 
you think, oh, I'm just going to help them. I'm going to yeah. just be forthright. I'm going to, you know, have nothing yeah. to hide. But they can use a lot of things that you say against you that you don't even think about. They will. Really, in one of my private conversations with some police, now they have this body cam. Not only will it video you, it audio, and it's almost mandatory. You've heard me say it before. So when I meet Chuck, I'm on. Chuck doesn't have a recorder. And uh, so that creates a problem. Is it an unfair advantage? That's just the way life is. So and one of the other tricks, I'll tell you one of the other tricks insurance companies may do. If Chuck has a substantial case and we're working, the insurance company will hire a private eye to watch Chuck. Chuck comes in and he gets his groceries and he takes them in the house and he said, well, oh, my back's killing. And they said, well, let me just show you some video, Chuck. Do you remember this? So. Whatever you say, it can be and will be used to get you in a criminal prosecution and in a civil prosecution. All things good to know. Well, we are going to go to our lines. If you are just tuning in, once again, you are watching Ask an Expert. This week it is Ask an Attorney. We're talking with Attorney Kevin Kennedy from the Kennedy Law Firm. Like I say, one of the top firms in the entire state of Tennessee. As we go to our line, 737-7587 is the number that you can call if you have a question or even a comment. So you help a lot of folks with those questions and comments in addition to yourself. All right, we're going to go to Lucy right now. Lucy, we're glad that you called in this evening. you have a question or a comment for Kevin? Yeah, hey, y'all. Uh, yeah, this is the uh, Kennedy Educational Law. All hour. right, Lucy, you tell them. We're on the same team. <laughs> okay, well, I, I've got a, a question, but first I want to make a quick comment about you, what you said about going to the emergency room and getting treatment or whatnot. Yes. If you go to the ER... And you got the average deductible nowadays is six to eight grand. You have to pay that ER bill before they let your body leave that building. So the insurance companies have you coming and going. The, the hospitals won't bill you. They want their money now, whatever your deductible has not met. And they know that down to the penny because I hear people complaining about that all the time. But anyway, Mr. Kennedy, I have a constitutional question. Okay. Mainly, uh, it's a matter uh, of, of Latin. I don't speak Latin. I'm from Middle Tennessee here where English is my <laughs> second language. I'm All still right. learning it. But anyway, uh, it, it has to do with basically what's going on and Thanksgiving is coming up. I'm sure this is going to be argued across the table. But I want to know, quid pro quo, is that the same thing as bribery? Is that the same thing? Can extortion be used in, in bribery? because I know blackmail people extort people for blackmail and then bribery if, if I the cops now ask you to hand them their driver's license and you better not open up your billfold with your license there was some money hanging out because they'll consider that I've heard uh, a bribe she's good so yeah. anyway, you are good right, so, <laughs> so let me get off the phone and, All right, and I want to address tell it. me what quid pro quo if it's those two terms as well in the English language language other than Middle Tennessee. Thank you. <laughs> you are doing good. And you know what she just doing did? She good. identified you know several issues. These are legal quid pro quo. Well, guess what? How are you going to define it? Because Chuck's definition may be different than mine. Which side of the argument are Chuck and I on? Are we defending you? Are we advancing your cause? So let's find out who the parties are and what are our interests? Who are we trying to protect? Uh, the extortion and bribery, you know, if they charge Chuck and I was representing him, you know, we're going to get to the bottom of that. We would do every kind of explanation to try to protect Chuck. So loose lips sink ships, and if you come through and you say, okay, yes, I did say, if you don't do this, I'll do this, your own words will convict you. They say 90% of the people in the penitentiary are there because they talked. We talk about it all day long, Chuck. Don't make any statements. But you want to think, Chuck and I said the same thing. When we, we want to be fair. Let's just explain it. But again, there's two different agendas. There's an agenda to prosecute 
and an agenda to defend. So if I had those issues, I'd identify the issue and I would talk to my counsel privately and protect my interests, my family's interests, my business interests. That's what we would do. Absolutely. So, Lucy, thanks for getting us Excellent off to a great question, start this evening. Lucy. Absolutely. That was a great way to start Whether the show. Whether it's Southern or Latin, you did good. You were <laughs> on it. All right. We're going back to the phones right now. Douglas is on the line with us. Douglas, we're glad that you called in this evening. And do you have a question or a comment? Uh, I got a good good one for you guys tonight. We're ready. Okay. Go uh, ahead, Doug. All right. A couple years ago, I went on the shopping for health care that wasn't tied to uh, employment in any way. That way, if there was ever a lapse in employment, your health care don't lapse. And anyway, so it sent you through the market, and I got with a company, Advanced Healthcare Brokerage. Uh, their main location's out of Florida, but long story short, um, they sold us a full plan, you know, vision, dental, medical, the yes. whole work. Yes, yes, yes. You got you got a primary plan, you got a supplemental plan. I've got email, I've also got audio recording of this, so what I'm telling you is true. Uh, they sold me a plan and where my uh, supplemental insurance pays my deductibles to my primary, you know, and heaven forbid anybody ever have to use their medical, but you know, I went and got checked out a while back <laughs> at Vanderbilt, and now, okay, the supplemental insurance won't pay. Yes. So it's kind of put me into a big old uh, thing with stuck medical bills, but the point is, is who is liable? You know, I've got audio. I mean, you know, people can't go out there and market the public and sell them health care and tell them it works this way yep. and then not, it don't work. You're exactly right. And we've got business people, they will sell you the moon if you will buy it. So again, you have to protect, you know, they, they talk about, is it too good to be true? That's old fashioned wisdom that Chuck and I were talking about. It gets down, what would a reasonable man do under those circumstances? First off, they can't, they're regulated by the Department of Insurance. So you may have to file a complaint with the Commissioner of Insurance for the state of Tennessee. And if they have enough complaints, they're gonna just take the license away and you can't operate without it. So what is our best advice? Have a good understanding. You can question, but remember, people can lie. If they're out to beat you, you can't make a good deal with a bad man. So whoever we're dealing with, if the guy is notorious about cheating, lying, deceiving, you know, the Bible says you're going to reap what you sow, don't do business with them. And if we know, well, golly, I've got to take this deal, you better throw on the brakes. So if I were in that situation, I do my documentation, check. He's the master of trying to Google and find out everything before he does business. Great advice, Chuck. Of course, he's been on this legal show all these years, so he's <laughs> learning. And then we have to protect document, 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 because your file may end up at the Commissioner of Insurance. That may be the only way that you get any coverage whatsoever. And your lawyer may have to strong arm based on their agents misrepresentations. It's called respondeat superior, Latin. The one that's over everyone's responsible, he has to pay the money because he made the decision to put those people, his agents, representing his company. Great advice. Douglas, we appreciate the call. And again, you're calling, asking that question, Kevin's explanation, that helps a lot of us out there. So we appreciate that. We've got a lot of you calling in right now. We are going to take a short break, but hang on the line with us. More on Open Line right after this.